and uh, it was a busy night last night, I'll tell you, with the Farrah Fawcett stuff and then the Michael Jackson stuff last night. Watching some of the Farrah Fawcett stuff on TV uh, last night was just so, so sad. And then all the uh, stuff with Michael Jackson. You know, and people, I, I was watching this last night and I was trying to make this distinction. People, you can tell, are conflicted with Jackson. You know, they want to pay homage to his ability and what he left the world as an entertainer, but they don't want to give him too much credit because they feel then they are in any, in some way endorsing his lifestyle, you know? I, I, don't, I don't see that conflict. I think the way you handle it is when somebody like that dies, who obviously had some very good things to offer and some very strange things in their life and uh, may have been guilty of some very, very poor behavior and, and who are we to know what the truth is. But the way I look at it is this. When they die, what you want to center on is we, we can always center on the the bad part, the depraved part, and the poor part of anybody's nature. But I think what you want to do is you then want to honor what they left to the world. And he left a lot to the world. He left, he, he, he left uh, a brilliant career, and he left a, a lot of good music to the world. And that's how I look at it. I think, you know, it's like when Mantle died. You don't go back and get into the idea of what he did wrong you get into what he left the world and how he touched people it's the same thing i think with jackson and that yes no one's condoning in any way in any way condoning his behavior or giving him a pass for his behavior but you want to when he passes away you want to pay homage to whatever's been left to the world that's good and obviously there was some stuff that was left to the world that was uh gave people enjoyment and uh, musically is some very gifted stuff. And those videos, I tell you, you watch that guy dance, man, it's, it's crazy. You know, it really is crazy. You know, I didn't pay that much attention to it as it was going on in the, in the 80s. I'm not saying I did. I mean, you know, you, you, everyone was confronted with Jackson. But, you know, when you watch some of that stuff last night and you see the replays of, like, his Motown performance or you see those, you know, Billie Jean videos or some of those videos, uh, it's very interesting. And, uh, you know, my wife, uh, we have someone in the family who, who makes video, who makes movies. And they brought in movie crews to make those videos. They didn't just make them with, like, an MTV crew. They made them with a full-motion picture crew. So Billy Kerwick, who's uh, my brother-in-law, has been working in the movies his whole life, they brought him in to work on that. And he actually had struck up a little bit of a relationship in that Jackson liked him because they were on the set every day together. So my wife was an enormous fan of Michael Jackson growing up. She's a perfect age for that. And she went one day and watched him film the video and he actually came over and talked to her. Took her headset off, asked her what music she was listening to, put it on his head, talked to her for a while and said he could not have been nicer and something she said she remembers her whole life. That he spent like 10, 15 minutes with her one day on the set when she was a little girl. Like, not a little girl, but she was, say, 17 at the time. So she actually went and uh, actually saw the making of Thriller, she told me. It was Thriller. I thought it was one of the other ones, but it was Thriller that she saw the making of uh, in the city. And uh, she said he could not have been nicer, and uh, it was, you know, kind of this bigger-than-life figure at the time. Uh, and you watch some of those. They were like little movies, those things. They really were. They were so well. You're talking about John Landis, and Scorsese was involved in one, and Landis was involved. I guess he and Landis didn't w end up very well. I guess they wound up with some lawsuits. I think this, everything he did wound up in some kind of lawsuit. But uh, I guess he and Landis wound up in some lawsuits. Uh, but he had great people doing those things, and those were, I guess, it's, I guess a real cut above. I was not a MTV watcher, but I guess those were a real cut above what there was at the time. And you can tell that they've uh, really some amazing stuff. You know, amazing. The only guy I ever saw who could moonwalk, and I saw Jackson in person because I saw him at the Super Bowl. So I did see him pretty up close. Uh, but the only guy I ever saw who could do that other than Jackson was Danny Gans. Danny Gans could actually do it. He did a Jackson impersonation where he actually could moonwalk. So I don't know if anyone else could actually do it, but I did see the late Danny Gans. Ironically, Danny Gans, who uh, probably would have incorporated even more of Michael Jackson into his act, and he had incorporated a lot of them into his act, uh, just passed away recently, dying of uh, cardiac arrest in his sleep.
quite ironically, uh, just probably two months ago, or you know, less than le less, maybe even less than that. So he had just passed away too. So it was a, you know, you think about someone like that dying. Now I don't want to put Ed McMahon on that list because you know Ed McMahon's been lumped in with the other two. Ed McMahon is, you know, no one's knocking Ed McMahon, but he, you know, the other two are cultural icons. But to have a Farrah Fawcett pass away and then Michael Jackson on the same day is just. You know, the cable news uh, folks didn't know what to do last night. They, you know, they, they couldn't get to the stories. They, they had too much. They had too much to do in one night. There was actually too much there for one evening. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, how long. I think this is going to be uh, days and days deal when you think about uh, the stories that have come out. And I got a feeling not all of them are going to be the most pleasant of stories either uh, in the days to come. But he did leave a extraordinary body of work behind. And I would say a collection uh, that will last a long time. So uh, uh, he will, as far as musically, he will live uh, forever. There's no question because he did do some absolutely brilliant work. 13 number one hits and the biggest grossing album of all time, which is pretty impressive. Uh, we'll get back to baseball right after this.